Yeah, the challenges that we're facing has a, has a huge impact on what we're doing. Eh? Uh, I mean, the RFMF uh, is confronted by so many challenges on a very regular basis. Uh, they can be very complex in nature, and at the same time they can be very simple for us to actually uh, uh, take care of. Uh, but to understand uh, the RFP, one has to really understand the nature of the way things have turned out. It's history, it's past. And that's important because uh, since the, the creation of the RFMF way back then, before the Great Wars, uh, it has been part of a legacy that was uh, built upon the surface and ultimate sacrifice of those that were part of the institution. 1987 was, I think, was an epoch moment for the RFMF and also the nation because of uh, the decisions that were made back then by the RFMF leadership not only had an impact on the RFMF, but on the nation as a whole. So that path took a new journey for the RFMF and the nation. And I think it was the beginning of that continuous involvement of the RFMF in the internal affairs of government and the political environment within, uh, within Fiji. So when you're coming down to 2000, Again, that is an outcome of what happened in 1987 and again in 1986. So there is a deeply rooted political dynamic in terms of the factors that are being involved. There is an interplay, an interwoven of issues that are very complex in nature. You have a political issue, there are economic, there are social, uh, there are legal issues, uh, there are security issues as well, and even going down to traditional issues as well. <clears throat> These factors make uh, the challenge for the RFMF a lot more complex. And uh, with our involvement, you know, it makes things a lot more difficult when it comes to command responsibility. So when you have something like what we were trying to do here today, in terms of our reconciliation process, it's a journey back to the past. And to see how we can actually... <clears throat> you know, heal that particular wound. <clears throat> many mistakes were created, were done. Uh, many families were impacted. If you go into the 2000, we had soldiers that died on both sides. And that's something that we feel is, has been a burden, or not a burden, it has been part of our journey throughout the many years. And it's something that we need to take care of before we start moving into a much more brighter uh, future for the RMF but more importantly for the nation as a whole. Uh, and for me as Commander RFMF, one of my key responsibilities is to ensure that I maintain the integrity of the institution. And I've always told the troops <coughs> and the officers in, in, uh, in the RFMF that the RFMF is an entity in itself. It's an institution. It's an entity. It has its own uh, values. It has its own ethos. It has its own uh, principles that guide the RFMF. It has its own standards. Every soldier that comes into the RFMF comes in with his or her imperfections. And it is the responsibility of the institution to see that they come up to that particular standard of uh, the RFMF. And that's another challenge for us, trying to transform, reshape an individual to what they were when they were in the civil streets to be part of this culture. And I said, when the culture takes a new turn, since 1987 up until today, it has its impact. It is deviating away from the original path of the RFMF. The lines have gotten so blurred, people don't understand? <clears throat> Definitely. And those are some of the issues that we are facing. You know, traditionally within the RFMF, the protocols, that the traditional protocols that we have, the traditions that we need to follow, again, that's another issue in itself for us. It, it requires very, very strong leadership. It requires transformational leadership, leaders that can uh, lead by example, that can motivate the troops to understand uh, the real essence of why they've been called as soldiers.